Hello there, Can Nokorab here, back for another New in Town Dev Diary. Once again, we are visiting some of the new features coming in version 2.12, the Fortified update, which launches on November 4th. Uh, last couple episodes, we've been building up this town. We uh, explored the new upgrade system that lets you build a new sawmill to upgrade your lumber mill, industrial farm to upgrade your farm plot, tap mine to upgrade your original mine, and town hall to upgrade your town or your settler's wagon, all by way of this bank structure. Uh, and then we also built these nice walls around our town, these new walls that let us go around corners and go up ramps uh, and now feature a new functional gate structure as well. This episode, we are going to be taking a look at the overhaul upgrade to the castles, mostly, as I said, aesthetic, but with some technical changes as well. So let's go ahead and get started here by hopping outside. We've got our working gates, as I said, from our wall. And as you can see here, I have built up five castle frames. Uh, we already have them there. They work exactly the same way as uh, they did before with the castle planner here in the middle. Got our squire here who sells you the recipe book. We'll take a look at why I have those items later. You'll see here that I have only built five, as I said, castle frames. You still do get six castle permits. Don't worry about that. That's not changing. Um, but I'll explain why I've only done five here in a moment. Uh, first, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the aesthetic changes uh, that have come in. We're going to go ahead and complete this recipe here uh, and create the castle entry. So the recipe for the castle entry has not been changed. However, you'll see here the aesthetics have. So this is the new exterior of the castle entry. Greatly updated from the original. Before it used to be well, basically entirely stone brick couple of windows they weren't very nice and just some normal ramparts up top but now you see we've got some cobblestone and andesite mixed in not necessarily part of the recipe mostly here just for the aesthetics as i said got a nice wooden roof as well um again not terribly in involved in the recipe strictly for aesthetics uh and then these nicer uh, windows as well with the trapdoors. We'll go ahead and take a look inside and you'll see the castle entry itself has also um, received the interior a update. Uh, Squire is still safe in the corner here facing the wall apparently but we've got a beautiful staircase going up to a second level. The second level has two doors which allows you to access um, the uh, connecting ramparts and stuff so you could theoretically patrol the walls of your castle if you so chose um, not a perfect one-to-one -one being able to jump up but just at a block here you'll be able to access uh, the exterior of your castle uh, the stairs otherwise have no functional purpose other than to look nice uh, they do cover up a little bit of this nice new floor which isn't carpet based anymore um, but i still think the recipe fits well enough um, for what is essentially an aesthetic structure, one of two only ways to have entrances into your castle. You'll also notice here that these connecting walls have been um, extended. So they used to be, it would meet halfway in the middle. And then when you built up the other site, uh, the other wing, then it would connect. Now it just extends all the way. Um, and the reasoning for that is just it allows for uh, better fitting of structures together. Um, and it also allows you to have uh, six or to build structures um, or castle frames and castle wings after you've already built up and upgraded to some of them. Um, so in the past, if you had built all your five castle wings, um, upgraded them up to the full castle wing, and then built your sixth castle frame over here, for example, uh, then it would not connect correctly. Um, it would try to connect to these frames, uh, but they no longer would. So in fact, we can actually see that I'm going to go ahead and upgrade all of these five wings I'll, and then I'll build a new frame and upgrade that to kind of show you what that looks like. So I will be right back. All right, we are back outside of our castle. As I said, I went ahead and upgraded all five of my wings that I currently have here. We'll take a look at the um, new upgrading or new, new connecting, I should say, for new frames. And then we'll go take a look at the exterior and then interior for all of these structures. So I will go ahead and uh, use this recipe that I've already prepared here. We've got our castle permit, builds us a castle frame, and then I will go ahead and build our stable right here. And that's all six of our castle wings upgraded, so it's going to give us our advancement. Since we're here, we'll go ahead and take a look at the new interior for the stable first. Um, you'll see it spawns the horses automatically instead of providing two new horse eggs. 
these horses are not saved as part of the structure they get spawned in after the structure has been placed um, so that they can be random so this time i got a white and a black horse i don't know how good they are uh, but in theory you could get good horses you could get bad horses from this spawning it is a little tighter they're now in nicer little um, corrals here uh, but with the advent of the larger entryways here and with walls in particular, walls and gates not being right up against new sites, um, once the site planner's out of the way, you'd be easily able to ride your horses out from these uh, gates here. And of course, as I said, this plus the entry are the two only ways uh, to have entrances into your castle. Let's take a look at the exterior of all of these structures now. So our stable here, uh, continuing with the same motif with the cobblestone and a site uh, and stone brick. Got a similar roof, but a little bit different to uh, visually separate it from all of the other wings. You'll see, um, unlike before, each new, each uh, separate wing structure has a noticeable difference from one another. Even this entry and this uh, this one over here happens to be the library. Um, their roofs are similar, uh, but not identical in size and shape, um, just to have a, a similar aesthetic, but they can still be told apart from the outside much better than before. Um, so as I said, this is the stable, we've got our entry, this is the throne room, which is one of the new structures, replaces the bedroom, we'll get more into that when we go into the interior. This is the treasury, a lot more locked down, you'll see even on the outside we have iron trapdoors for the windows instead of wooden trapdoors like everywhere else. The guard tower looks much, much nicer, significantly different design from the um, normal town guard tower. Uh, which I still think looks pretty good for what it is, uh, but this one fits better with the castle in particular. Um, still functions the same way, um, and as before, you could already climb it, but now you can, um, you can continue to climb it. And then as I said, our library is over here. Um, I did not build a courtyard, but that structure is still uh, available. You can still build that from the, the town squire. Um, I just didn't for this, that uh, structure has not changed at all. Um, so it connects better because of these new connections and the way that they happen to work with their structure voids um, but functionally uh, and aesthetically the courtyard is unchanged um, let's go ahead and go inside and we'll take a look at each of our structures including the new uh, or in fact starting with the new throne room so the throne room here uh, looks i think pretty nice we got some stairs up here so that you can come up and sit on your throne um, and then others can, of course, come up and, and beseech the king of the town um, as they sit upon the throne. The throne room is very important. It replaces the bedroom, as I said. So the bedroom you can no longer build. Uh, and that's because, quite frankly, bedroom, kind of lame. Uh, I always felt it was very tight, um, wasn't very cozy. Uh, and in particular, um, it didn't really do anything, um, especially with the advent of the homestead. Uh, this is something I, I've been open about in the past, but if you weren't already aware, the homestead was not an original new in town structure, uh, or I should say wasn't a structure in the original new in town in its first versions. Um, it was added uh, in the basically re-release uh, for 1.16 um, based on player feedback because players wanted somewhere to live in their town uh, and the castle was much too late game. The bedroom in the castle was much too late game. They wanted to move out of their wagon much sooner. Um, so People were building homesteads, of course, because it's a much nicer, more convenient home. And by the time you've built a castle bedroom, it's just way too small for uh, compared to your homestead. So it was pretty useless. Uh, so I replaced it with the throne room. So what does the throne room do? Well, it does two things. Uh, first off, every day at noon, it will spawn an XP orb here. And the XP orb will provide an amount of experience uh, based on the number of citizens in your town. So it's like taxes, but instead of taking money from your villagers, you are rewarded for having a larger town um, by just getting some XP. It's not massive, uh, but it is based on the size of your town. So the more villagers you have, uh, the more citizens that are in your town, the more experience that you'll be given every day at noon. The other thing it does is buff the treasury. It increases the amount of taxes you get from your villagers. And that's important because if we come over to the treasury, this has a couple of changes too. First and foremost, most important, it's been nerfed. Uh, this is, I think, a, a necessary change. The treasury used to be very, very strong and provide a lot of gold. Uh, it was double, two gold for every citizen in your town. So with a pretty large town, it got pretty dramatic pretty quickly. Um, so now it's been nerfed. It's only one gold ingot per town or per villager, I should say. Um, and then the throne room buffs it back up to two. So if you have a throne room and a treasury, the treasury is producing the same amount of gold as it used to. 
uh, as in the uh, prior to this update. Uh, but without the throne room, then it's producing just one gold ingot per villager, which I think is uh, a little more manageable. Still going to be very powerful, very useful, um, but not obscene. On top of that, to help still with how how much gold you can really get with a treasury, in particular with a throne room too, um, it no longer collects in a hopper. It just collects in a chest, similar to the farm plot um, or the mining drill. This is to prevent any lag from all those entities. Um, so it is only one chest. You'll need to empty this out occasionally. If it gets full, you won't get any more taxes. Um, but this way, it just gets deposited directly into the chest, no hopper necessary. So you don't have to worry about all those item entities creating a lot of lag. Uh, so those are the two important changes for the treasury and our throne room. We've already discussed the stable, so we'll move on a little bit here. Everything else uh, has been mostly aesthetic changes. So the, th or the guard tower uh, looks fairly similar, uh, but it's just a little bit cleaner, uh, a little bit tighter based on the changes that were done for the exterior purposes. Um, so the stairs, instead of going around the edge of the room, now spiral up in the middle of the room, and they come to a ladder a little more quickly. There is an additional uh, little balcony up here, so you can look out these windows. They don't go anywhere, though. And then, as I said, of course, you can still climb it up to the top if you so choose, just like with our normal guard tower now. Uh, and lastly, we'll go take a look at the library. I'm just going to fall down here. There we go. Library is pretty similar to before. Uh, I was already pretty happy with the design, so it was just a matter of rebuilding it and reshaping it to the new size of the, uh, uh, of the structure. Um, notably, I do want to make it clear if the sizes of the walls have not been changed, at least where the um, uh, entries would be. Um, this is so that new uh, uh, castle add-ons do not need to update. Um, so if you have a, a custom add-on, a structure add-on that adds castle wings, you don't have to do any updates to this version uh, if you don't want to. Uh, I would recommend it because the aesthetics are so much different. Uh, your wings will stand out a bit. Um, but functionally, everything is now handled, uh, any changes are uh, already accounted for by the castle frame. Um, so, and the the uh, functions um, that are handled in like site cleanup. So you don't have to change your functions or your structure if you don't want to. Um, again, I'd recommend it. The function as well is much cleaner than it used to be, um, at least for the template. So I would recommend it, but you don't have to. And that's very, it was very important. So the sizes are the same. The connections will still work the same, um, just it won't match uh, style-wise. Royal Librarian functionally works exactly as before. Uh, starts with three trades uh, of books. You can trade books back and forth, including enchanted books, just like in the Wizard Tower, and you can get a book to the wiki. And these three trades will randomly change every day. Um, the only thing that's changed now, this code has been optimized significantly. So it was technically not very optimized, not very efficient before. Um, used uh, item entities and had to search out those entities. Doesn't do that anymore. It's much cleaner now. Um, does it with storage and, and things like that. Um, so on top of that, because it does that, um, the trades themselves are also slightly less random. So it used to be possible that you could get like a mending book here in this slot, in the least expensive slot, um, and that won't happen anymore. The, if you get a mending book, it'll always be this third slot. Um, and that's how it was always intended, um, but now it actually does it because I've optimized it. That is pretty much everything new with the castle. Um, you know, as it goes with how you build it, um, it's effectively the same, works exactly the same way. It's just a lot more forgiving with your connections, as you can see here, connected totally fine, even though we built this wing last. So we can walk over here and, and enter our throne room um, as if it were always there, even though this was a solid wall prior. Um, and yeah, just changes to how they look, uh, a couple of changes to like the stable, how they work, treasury, how they work, and then a new structure with the throne room. Uh, so that is, now you've seen pretty much everything that there is new in New in Town version 2.12, the Fortified update. Once again, this update is launching on November 4th, so be sure to keep an eye on that. By the time this comes out, that'll be about two days. Uh, and on top of that, the New in Town Dimensions update will be launching at the same time on the same day, November 4th. So keep an eye on that. We'll be updating the dimensions to two or uh, 1.19, Minecraft 1.19, so you'll be able to fully enjoy those dimensions alongside all these new changes. Uh, the next couple of dev diaries will be starting after November 4th, 
Um, so keep an eye out for those. We'll be looking at the new features and changes that went into Dimensions uh, and all the uh, you know work that went into updating that to 1.19 um, because because of the update to 1.19, a lot of stuff did have to change. Um, I think for the better. I think it's a beautiful new update, beautiful new worlds, um, but you'll have to wait and see all of those changes. With that, I will go ahead and talk to you guys later. Do remember to like and subscribe so you can see those trailers when they drop on November 4th. Get notified about when that update, or when the, both of those updates drop. And then, of course, keep an eye out for those dev diaries. See you guys later.